Before we start this video, quick shout out to our unofficial sponsor. Unofficial sponsor. Unofficial sponsor. Uh, shout out to you, Goonie. Uh, there, we did it. Uh, onto the video. You thought you were gonna get more airtime, huh, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Psych. <laughs> but welcome everybody to the new episode of the Thought Experiment Podcast, where your host, as usual, J40 and Sickly. Hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Hope you guys didn't catch no STDs, none of that good shit. And hopefully you guys enjoy this bitch, because we got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, you were just showing me, and that's, it's one of the saddest things I've seen in quite a while. Right? That was a messed up video, man. For anybody that watches this, it's, uh, I wouldn't even recommend somebody watch it. No, I highly don't. Like, I would tell people about it, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's just, it's a moving video. Whatever you want to throw at it, oh, how do we even know it's real or whatever? It could be staged. Whatever you want to throw about it. Maybe that, then, then it's the best acting I've seen in a while and give this kid a Grammy. Or, yeah. I mean, an Emmy. I'm in an Emmy. But or it's. I want to give him a Grammy too, fuck it. It's a moving video, man. And it's, uh, and I guess Border Patrol saw this kid. He was off duty. So the dude was off duty. He was an off duty uh, Border Patrol officer. I don't know what the fuck he was dr doing driving in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure. But basically, the video starts him. He's in the middle of butt fucking nowhere in Texas. And it's just, you see a little figure at the distance. And he's driving in his truck and he approaches him. It's a kid, dude. He's in fucking tears, crying like a motherfucker. And he goes up to him and goes, hey, what are you doing here? And he goes, oh, could you help me? And he goes, what happened? And he's like, uh, they left me. He goes, who left you? He goes, the group I was with. He's like, uh, where's your mom and dad? He goes, I'm not with them. He goes, I got sent by myself with this group. And I woke up and they were gone. And he's like, they brought me over here because saying I could, I could seek uh, help. And they left me. He goes, I'm, he goes, I'm scared. I'm scared of getting robbed. I'm scared of getting kidnapped. He goes, you know, could you guys help me? And it's like, dude, the fucking look on that kid's face. Just, it fucked me up, dude. It really bummed me out. Because I was like, how do you have the fucking gonads to leave a kid by himself? Yeah. I mean, even if the kid's not yours, dude, like... What's wrong with you, dude? What the fuck is in you? What kind of human being leaves a defenseless child there just to fend for themselves, basically? Yeah, man. I think if you were raised even somewhat decently, if you modeled after, like, good men in your life, you 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 would feel protective of that kid. Exactly. You would, you would even, again, even if you were half decent, modeled after half decent men in your life, you would look to that kid and say, look... I probably don't have a lot to gain from this, but I want to keep this kid as safe as possible. Yeah, dude. But they abandoned him. They fucking left him. Just fucking left him. And it's like, like I, was, I watched this shit last night, you know, and I was talking to my girl about it. And it's like, it fucked me up, dude. It really fucked me up. It ruined my mood. But like she even asked me, she goes, what would you do? You know? What would you do if you were the dude and you weren't a border patrol agent? You know, what would you do? And it's like, honestly, I, 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 I gave her my most optimistic hypothetical I can. Where I was like, honestly, I wouldn't want that kid to go to that fucking camp. Personally, I wouldn't. Because as, as you've seen or if, if anyone has seen, there's videos of these kids sleeping on the ground taking turns. Meaning... These fools are standing up while other dudes are falling asleep. And right. when they get up, okay, those dudes get up. And the other dudes that were standing up get their turn to sleep. It's like they ration the comfort of the ground. The, the, the floor. Like, how is that a way to live? Yeah. And it's like, I told her, I was like, honestly, I'd probably take the little motherfucker with me, you know? But I wouldn't adopt him. Like, I'd take him with me where he has somewhere decent, at least. Like, I'm, I'm not going to offer him the fucking world, but, you know, I'd offer him some comfort in the yeah. meantime. Or I'd fucking say, like, hey, you know what? Do you have anybody here? Do you know of anybody right. here? And if the kid... Like, if there was no way of him getting to any sort of family, then my last option was, yeah, you know, I'd call child service and be like, hey, you know what? I found this kid. I tried helping him. I couldn't, unfortunately. I think it's your guys' turn to take him. You know? Because that's no way to live either, dude. I, I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself knowing that I got this kid, I found him, and I didn't do anything in my power to help him before I sent them over there to that camp. Yeah. I'd feel like a total scumbag, dude. I would. Yeah, I'd feel horrible too. And it, it sounds weird saying this, but dude, but my weakness are kids, dude. Like, I can't... I, I hate seeing a kid go hungry. I hate seeing a kid, you know, 
suffer. It sucks seeing that shit, you know? I can see another motherfucker go hungry and another piece of shit go suffering. I can give a fuck. You're a grown-ass man. Or a woman. You know, you can fend for yourself. But a kid, you know, that's the innocence of the world, man. That, that's the future of humanity. So it's like, I can't personally see myself uh, letting them suffer and not step in, you know? Like, I can't. Like, if I see a little motherfucker going like, hey, bro, I'm hungry, I'll be like, hey, come on, bitch, we're sharing a sandwich. Fuck it. I wouldn't call him a bitch, though, but, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it fucking sucks, dude. It's, it, it, it's sad, but it pisses me off how they're normalizing this shit now. Yeah, they how really are. How it's becoming normal to fucking send kids over here. From both sides. It's almost like criminals... Uh, they they're like there's a high demand for getting these people up to here mm -hmm. and then letting the americans handle it border whether it be border patrol uh whoever you know yeah. there's yeah. like an incentive for criminals for the underworld to, to to whether they're kidnapping these kids or people whether they're uh what's it called coyotes yeah they coyotes. are in the business of like smuggling people it's like well high demand we got high supply we got all these countries you know whether it's honduras whether any any pick your poison pick pick your country and yeah, we got it bitch we yeah. got it we, if there's one inventory we have as criminals it's people yep so and it's not ending right now it's never ending how they say supposedly over 500 people or are, 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 are kids at least are crossing every day right now they're saying there's over 19,000 kids in custody 19,000 kids in the span of what three months four months like, really? I want you to think about something. I want you to think about... Those are the numbers they're telling us are in those centers. Yes. Think about the kids that might have slipped through. And I'm not I'm not saying how dare they slip through. The, through no, and, not at all. But I'm saying the kids that might be out here in some safe house. In some strange city in the U.S., whether it's a it's a metropolitan area mm -hmm. or whether it's like a small little, uh, you know, uh, non suburban area, the kids that slip through and they're lost, they don't have their kid, their parents, they uh, they're staying with strangers who might or might not be they criminals. They don't even fucking know who they are. Yeah, and now think about this: the kids that are unaccounted for. And out there lost. Like, dude, it's almost a miracle that we see this video of this kid being found. Bro, what happened in that video of those, of those Border Patrol agents that caught those fucking smugglers throw two, two to toddlers over the fence? Yeah, with the uh, infrared, like that infrared. The infrared cameras. If they weren't there, bro, what the fuck were those toddlers going to do? They were going to be food. Coyotes are going to come and eat their asses up. Like... People aren't seeing that. We're, we're going ahead and getting numbers from people that we actually catch, people that actually come to us. Right. What about those that don't make it? What about those that slip through, actually, and aren't part of that tally? Yeah. And who knows how they're going to be taken advantage of here in the country? Bro, for all we know, By bro, criminals. Exactly. For all we know, maybe double that number, maybe another 19,000 are either dead, either being used for sex trafficking, because people say, oh, no, you only see that in the movies. That's a goddamn lie. That is a fucking lie. Because who's going to vouch for you? Who's going to look for you, bro? Right. When there's nobody there. You think you think a kid is going to be able to defend themselves over three, four grown-ass men? When they, those grown-ass men say, Hey, bro, well, we're taking you here. And as soon as you get here, you're pulling down your pants. Yeah. You really think a kid's going to be able to defend themselves? How many of those kids are going to be misguided, taken advantage of, to then become criminals themselves? Exactly. Like, we're talking violent criminals. Yeah. And people aren't seeing that. People are saying like, oh, well, they deserve they deserve uh, a chance. And then nobody's arguing that. This is the greatest fucking nation on the face of the planet. No other greater place to come to. But it's like, why are we normalizing them coming illegally and them going through that treacherous journey and possibly not even coming over here alive? Because, dude, there's stories. I can't say if it's true or not, but there's stories that supposedly kids that go over there that get sent don't even cross the border they stay there and they get trafficked in mexico because i don't know if you know this but a lot of them cross through a train they hop a train that goes that goes from one end of mexico to the next they call it the beast that's what they call the train it's known as the beast because a shitload of people die out there dude it's known that women and children get constantly raped in that fucking train 
And some don't even make it. Like, you as a parent, bro. You as a parent. I understand you want your kid to have a better life. But how could you go ahead and risk your child's well-being by sending them, sending them through that shit by themselves? Well, I think... Uh, let's, uh, or, I mean, in my perspective, let's be 100% honest. I think oftentimes it's just desperation. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Why not? I don't agree with that. Because, dude, they're going to have to pay. Where are they going to get that money from? There's probably aunts. Some, some, possibly aunts. Or there's possibly dudes that just say, hey, well, I'll bring you over here. They bring them over here and that's it. You don't see them again. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely going on. You see them again. So let's leave out the orphans. Okay. What about the dudes that have parents and get sent by themselves? How, you as a parent, even through desperation, how could you be okay with splitting your kid by themselves? Why don't you go with them? Well, there's cultural differences in like what you're willing to. Uh, I feel like, and a lot of this has to do also with class, like economics, uh-huh. like certain. According certain, to them, everybody's broke. Where? Well, according to the people that are coming over here, they're leaving because everybody's broke. Well, yeah, that's the people that are leaving, and that's the people that are leaving in those desperate. I don't think legal immigrants come on that fucking train, bro. No, not at all. You know what I mean? Well, and th- some and eventually I th- and I think some that's, that's cross a- through there first, and then eventually try to get asylum yeah. or go through the embassies. And that's a big difference. That's a that's a difference. Uh, mm. You might know more about this than me. To to immigrate legally, you, can you do it free? A hundred percent free? I can't really. I'm not really sure. Well, obviously, you gotta you gotta first apply for a visa. Go from there. Show that you're in good standing when you've been working in the United States. From there, that that is a, that you do have to pay for that. Okay. And then it's a process. You know, it's a process. It, is it a long process? Yeah, of course. It's a long process. But you know, if you got a shot of not having to go through that arduous journey and still pay the same, because think about it, they do end up paying the same amount of fucking money. Bro, coyotes now, smugglers, they're not charging three grand anymore, bro. Those motherfuckers charge from nine to fifteen thousand dollars. You're telling me people that are escaping from economic uh, uh, bullshit, how the fuck they come up with 15000 fucking dollars? I don't think they pay that all up front. They do? I think they pay. I th- I've heard that they pay. Some people pay a deposit, and then they, you, they get you across, and then you're quote-unquote in debt to those coyotes. No, the vast, the vast majority that I've heard of, they don't even have you in debt. It's just like, hey, before they even release you, the money's coming. The money's coming. If the money ain't coming, then you're ours. We're not letting you go. Because think about it. If you're running a business like that, what what does it benefit you to have somebody owe you? You're not making money. How are you making money with somebody that's going to owe you and then you're not going to know where they're going to go to? Oh, I'm going to go to my cousin's house. Where does it come live? Oh, my cousin lives in L.A. Where? Oh, they live here. Okay, we're going to go look for you, dude. You dude, you don't, you, there's no guarantee they're going to be there. Um, Well, I think one thing maybe is... Interest? I'm oh. not saying they charge interest. Yeah, it doesn't. Or work another well. example. Well, I don't know how it works. But another example is uh, where me and you work. Uh, you know, there's that guy that has his business where he lets people pay them at the end of the week or even up to two weeks or longer, right? Yeah. What's the incentive there? How is he so sure some of those people aren't going to quit, lose their job? Lag on him. I, I see. I see what you're coming from. So you must have sustainable it, ways to make money. It's totally different. We're talking about totally different products. Here. I know. I know. I know. One's food. The other's actual people. You know, you're not gonna make. You're not gonna make money if a dude owes you that you just helped cross the border. Like I, the only reason I know a lot of this is because I've known dudes that did it and got busted for it, and I hear their stories where they say, "Nah, bro. Like they don't. They don't let you go. If you owe them money, they're not gonna let you go." Mm-hmm. You're either gonna pay with ass, meaning they're gonna fucking they're gonna, you're gonna be hooking it, guy or girl, or if you're a dude, they're gonna make you smuggle, and you're gonna smuggle drugs. And you don't got enough of it, don't trip. You're gonna carry this with you. You're gonna carry this shit with you, and you're gonna cross it. Once you cross it, don't trip. You're not gonna lose money. Wow. They're gonna get paid once you cross. If they you don't get paid, you're fucked. That's also, um, obviously, these smugglers are in competition with each other. Yeah, definitely. It's a business, right? And in business, definitely. you want to give the best product at the best price. Yeah. So some of them might, you know, drop their prices. I, I, maybe. I see it very unlikely, but it is a possibility. But I, like I say, the minimum people are doing it for right now is like eight grand. Minimum. And those are basically the ones where you got to cross the desert. There's dudes that charge you like 15 Gs. 
And that's so far from what I've known is the safest way. Because what they do, obviously, is they give you fake papers. They give you somebody else's stolen passport or somebody's borrowed passport. And they say, hey, you look like this fool right here. You're going to be John Smith for right now. You're going to cross. And you're going to say you're John Smith and you live in you live in this city. And this is what you're going to say. And people pass like that. People pass like that. And even if you got some some experience speaking some English, even better because it, it gives the, the Border Patrol agents the, the incentive of, oh, this one does speak Spanish. So there's a possibility he has been living in L.A. or in California or whatever. Possibility. Although, you know, you're telling me they can't learn that shit in their country, but still. That's what I've wondered, too. I was like, for, for people that live in countries and they want to come to America, right? This is not me standing on my soapbox. This is not me, like, condescending, you know? Yeah. But surely by now they must know, hey, if you're going to make that journey or if you're going to take that huge risk, you're risking your life. You're risking sometimes your freedom. You're risk, you know, you're risking a lot of things. Do you prepare? Learning the English language. Not a lot. Learning no, some English customs. Some kind of like, you know, do you know how to read the room here in America? Do you know like some of our, the things we do that we might not even be aware of that you can pick up on and, and use to pass, pass off as a, as a citizen or like, you know, what's up here? I find it highly unlikely. Yeah. I find it highly unlikely. And it's like, even then, dude, like why you as a parent, why don't you cross the border by yourself? You cross the border, you make that journey. And once you make it and don't get caught, bro, how many people out there? go hop the border make it work and send money for to their families mm -hmm. where they get a better life that's what I, okay you, that's, that, exact, that's been going on in venezuela for years okay that same thing you don't think how many how many of these cases do you think is that that exactly that what you just mentioned playing out meaning the parent let's say the dad crossed earned some money then paid to have his son get crossed but sometimes it's, but sometimes when it comes to, not all the time but sometimes when they do that, like, oh, I'm going to pay my son to get across, they usually bring in a family member with them just to make sure that they're safe. Mm -hmm. Or they'll be like, hey, I'm bringing your mom and I'm bringing, uh, or if you don't have a mom, hey, I'm bringing your cousin with you or your uncle with you, you know? Or, or your the aunt. same way you can pay for, and you know, we're making these uh, comparisons, yeah. whatever. The same way you can pay for priority shipping, one day shipping, two day shipping. <laughs> yeah, you can pay that that smuggler. Hey, I'm paying you extra, bro. An extra like grand. Treat my son the closest thing to VIP as you can treat somebody. And it actually is. It is possible. Yeah, I, I figured. It is possible. There's dudes where they say, "Hey, your priority is gonna be this little motherfucker or this dude or these people," and I'm paying you extra for that. Fools will be like, "All right, cool. We're gonna take care of him." You know. So it is something that's possible. But, you know, I still don't think that's an excuse to go leave your kid alone. Like, send your kid by themselves. Yeah. I'm sorry. but No, 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 no. I, I, get, I get where you're coming from, And man. people disagree when people disagree with me. I'm just trying to think differently than what I'm already no. stuck to no, in I, my I, head. I understand. I understand it. Obviously, and I can like, imagine me having a kid. I don't think I would take a risk like that. I wouldn't. Like, if it was like me and my girl had a kid, dude, and shit hit the fan here in the U.S., like, me, I'd have more possibility... Of, of of doing shit over there in in, in, in Mexico or in TJ, you know? Because I know my way around. You know my way around the motherfucker. So I'd be fine. So I'd go by myself. I'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm heading over there. Once I feel like it's good, I'm bringing all of you guys. You're going, you're coming with the kids. None of that bullshit of, oh, well, the kids are coming first and then you come later. Like, nah. You know? If I see that I can't, like if I see, hey, you know what? I can't bring you and the kids, then I'd say, I'm either going back and fuck it. We'll, do, we'll be in this bitch together we're suffering but we're doing it together we're doing it as a family or i'm gonna be like hey you're gonna have to wait a little longer wait a little longer but as long as the kids aren't alone the kids ain't alone they i got was, their mama right right yeah no that's, i feel that i want to get my gun soon you should so turners hook us up so if my girl's listening we got to get his and hers yeah <laughs> yeah and it's people People still don't want to admit that Biden is to blame for this. I honestly think he is because of the dumb shit he said. The way he opened his fucking mouth. You know what's crazy? Sometimes I listen to him or I watch him and I think, ah, I feel for this guy. I feel like all the years where he's fucking had to ride the, the Democratic current, mm -hmm. you know, 
you make friends in those high places you kind of you're bound to certain things probably not contractually but you know it's it's like it's understood like hey bro we did these favors towards you and your party or, or your group or your you and your friends it's time to pay the pipe just know you you owe yeah. we're not gonna come and tell you you owe you know you owe yeah so when you see us in the fucking in the house of, of the senators everybody talking their smack congress or pelosi taking that that speech just know you, you know what time it is you know yeah, sometimes i hear shut the fuck up sometimes i hear biden speak and i'm like sometimes i like hey, you know i like this guy ultimately you know where i stand yeah i'm for for our country yeah i agree so like i'm not our president exactly he's my, he's my president yeah no, no no i'm not gonna go ahead and start with that stupid shit like oh he's he's not my president he is and i'm not gonna go ahead and be on a on a on a biased rant saying that oh he's fucking up completely but what i'm trying to do is hold him account for what he did say yeah he did he did say yeah, this. yeah we are free that's the beauty we are free to critique and and even be angry yeah like i would understand if oh well, this is happening under his administration but he never said anything okay why the fuck am i gonna bring up biden to this you know it'd be stupid of me to bring up biden for something he didn't say yeah but the thing is he did say it he did say first hundred days he's gonna stop deportation he's gonna stop supposedly separating kids and that he was gonna be welcoming people that people that cross the border should be able to get uh welcome to the country and should be on a path to 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 become legal legal immigrants as soon as possible they came out of this came out of his mouth like no one's making this shit up so that's what i'm saying you opened your mouth now they're just swarming the fucking border like a son of a bitch where it's getting out of hand which is i'm not saying don't fucking come to the country but it's like bro is this the right way to come where kids are getting thrown over fences kids are getting abandoned kids are going missing kids are dying they've 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 found kids in the river doing river in, in the rio grande they found kids fucking dead because they drowned not just that kids that are never showing up and are, are basically using a sex traffic and then the kids that do make it here they're being overcrowded in fucking little cells taking turns sleeping on the goddamn dirt yeah. under a bridge how is that how is that good and it's like yet some people still want to open their fucking mouth and be like oh well you just don't want people to come i just don't want people to die especially kids i don't want kids to be treated like that bro i don't if grown-ass fucking people grown-ass women and 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 and, and men want to live that way when they cross the border hey, by all means bro you're your own motherfucking grown-ass person go ahead go fucking sleep on the dirt and take turns with another motherfucker who might be a chester right next to you go for it but that fucking 10 year old kid has no right to fucking live that way they got every right to enjoy their fucking childhood to the fucking fullest every kid out there has that right yet parents are being selfish and dumbass presidents with their dumbass words are being selfish and throwing them in the fucking basically in a, in a jungle bro it's like what the fuck how is that right and it's like if it if you really want people or if you really are for oh well, they got a right to come all right motherfucker do something about it get them out of those fucking cages and take them to your house because they'll be way better at your house than a fucking cage that's for sure yep nobody wants to stand up for that hey all of hollywood they don't want to do it all of hollywood all, you know everybody that's just uh super progressive super uh liberal all that stuff why don't you take them in? Why doesn't Bernie Sanders take all those kids in? He doesn't want him. Why doesn't AOC take all those kids in? Where is she at now? Where is she at now? She doesn't want to open her mouth. She doesn't want to open her mouth now. Why? She can't eat her words now. You know what I mean? And it's like... What, what else has to happen for people to finally say, Hey, you know what? This shit's getting out of hand. Yeah. What else has to happen? you got to see kids dying by the thousands? Is that what people need to see? So people can finally say, okay, bro, this is getting out of hand. And then now that shit is getting out of hand, the fucking government's trying to be sneaky about it and build more wall. Did you know that? I heard from you. They're building more wall. Yep. Whoa, whoa. Isn't it that... It's, I don't... Are you sure that they're building more wall? Or yeah. They their excuses, their excuses that supposedly they were previously funded from from the last administration 
So basically, it's like, well, the money's already there, so we're just going to use up whatever money we have left to finish whatever we can with the money that's left on that wall. I don't know if it's a done deal. I think it's being discussed. A I, certain part I of his administration. I heard they were going to start on it. Because remember, they stopped. They, they paused. They paused border construction, right? They paused, they paused construction on the wall. Now they're saying that since they already had the, the money allocated to that, they're just going to use it up. Really? You're telling me you can't pull that money out and use it for something else? Right. Well, I mean, maybe it already made it to the point of contracts. You know, certain companies already... Bro, it's possible to pull a contract. It's possible, especially if you're the fucking government. You could say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry, we're not going to do this shit anymore. I know we probably have to pay a penalty. We'll pay the penalty. But we're not going to spend... Let, let's just say hypothetically. We're not going to spend the $50 million remaining. You're going to take 10 out of it? All right, fuck you. will take the 10. We're going to keep our 40. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that's 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 how you break contracts. Yeah, there's penalties usually. Yeah, exactly. So you're telling me the government can't do that. But do you do do? Would you want to lose ten million? Okay, I wouldn't. Out of the example you just gave, that's twenty percent. I personally wouldn't. But if you're being if you're being all progressive and saying, "Well, we're not going to build no more wall," period. Wouldn't that be going against your values? It matters. It, I mean, it differentiates when you're being uh, proposed, like you're being shown data. And listen, your wall, maybe you guys uh, stopping the wall, you guys fucked yourself. There's a, there's a lot of people crossing. Uh, your idea is ineffective. It looks like based on the metrics, you need more wall. But then you'd be going against your values and against your promises to the people, right? Yeah, you would be. So that's what you're left with. So, would you stand by your values, stand by your values, and lose the 10 mil, or completely, basically make everybody else look stupid and make yourself look stupid and say, hey, fuck it, we're just going to finish whatever we got left with these 50 mil? I mean, I don't know. Every every administration has gone against the <coughs> word at some point or another. I agree. No, no, pre and that's the thing, bro. Can you imagine how hard it must be to be president? It sounds sexy. It sounds so sexy. Yeah, it sounds like the hottest thing out there. Like, in my opinion, dude, like, that's, like, imagine the attention you get, the fucking media coverage you get, everything you do becomes iconic. You meet with dictators, you meet with prime ministers, you meet with... Not even dictators, because no dictator wants to really meet with Biden. No, what but I'm what saying, happened no, to no, no. What, what happened to North Korea? Korea? North Korea said not, nah, But I'm saying president. Yeah. President. Obviously, in my <clears> opinion, <throat> Trump set a high standard. With certain aspects, other aspects he. Well, he's the only motherfucker that met with fucking Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un, yeah, yeah. He's the only one that met with him, and then he's the one that put him on check. <laughs> Where he was just like, "Hey, all right, fool, you want to keep fucking around?" I, th I don't know if they met after he called him Little Rocket Man. <laughs> yeah, like, you want to fuck around, bro? <laughs> but uh, what was I gonna say? And what do you? North Korea said, all right, bro, we're not going to fuck around. Yeah, but how hard must it be when you realize, dude, you have you meet with like 19 secretaries of fill in the blank. Yeah, yeah. I secretary of, of, of Homeland Security, Secretary of Agriculture, sec and all those secretaries that you have have uh, people that they delegate to. And those people have people that they, they delegate to. So how much shit has to be filtered to where you get it on your desk? All right, Mr. President, basically... All those piles of data we compiled it to this fucking sheet. Here's the pen. Do you wish to sign or not? Uh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fucking being a president must be hella stressful. It is. I'm. I'm. I'm not arguing that. But what I'm saying is, if you're making all these false promises, that so far you haven't been doing shit when it comes to like the promise you made so far. How are you looking already? How bad are your supporters looking now? Where they're looking at you like, bro, what the fuck happened? Out this of, is going to happen in the first hundred days and look at you. Yeah. Out of all the promises that you know Biden made, do you know of any? I can't I can't name them all. I really don't know all of his promises. But one one thing for sure, in the first hundred days, he was going to implement the path of citizenship. Did he? So far, from what I know, no one's been getting citizenship. He reopened the whole thing. He reopened DACA. But how is that citizenship? You're just well, getting that's a, a, that, you're, that's okay. a path. But how right? is it not necessarily the citizenship? You're just getting a work visa. Okay. That's all it is. That's all it is. And even then, in the fine print with a work visa, they could take it from you at any time. So if you get an asshole uh, of an of a immigration officer, probably not an uh, officer, but your caseworker or whatever, 
they could they could say you know what we don't feel like you're being productive to, to the country so we're just gonna pull it you know we're gonna pull it we're gonna pull your visa there's no just because just because DACA exists it doesn't guarantee you residency or citizenship do you think it should guarantee you I think it should should. If you're going to open your mouth and say, hey, we should go ahead and implement something that guarantees it, say it in the fine print, hey, if you're a DACA recipient, we're guaranteeing you. You might have a work you might have a work permit only. <laughs> Excuse me. But we're guaranteeing you motherfuckers that are getting DACA, you're not going to get deported. Nor is this you're going to get pulled as long as you follow the law. What well, if that person commits a crime where you would normally deport somebody? Well, then you- they're fucked. Well, I think that's why they have that clause. Of- well, that's what they would have. That- did, did you not hear what I said after? I said, you were guaranteed you're not going to get deported as long as you follow the law. That's what I said. So it's like, as long as you don't fuck up, as long as you're not getting drunk, like getting no DUIs, you're not getting caught with no illegal substances, any of that bullshit out there, you should be fine. Yeah. But if you're getting caught speeding, get a ticket, you know, like a normal person. Get a ticket, go to court, do your fucking community service or pay the goddamn ticket and see it. You shouldn't be scared of getting fucking deported. Yeah. You know? You shouldn't be getting scared of getting deported for misdemeanors. But that's where I'm saying, like, there's no guarantee through DACA. There isn't. Shout out to Screwball. Shout out to Screwball. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are lied to, and a lot of people are, I don't know if they're feeling stupid, but they're just like, wow. I know a couple of people that might be feeling stupid right now. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so far, the the profile that I could build on on um, Biden's uh, cheers on um, Biden's first whatever how many how many days it is, it, it's not good. It sucks. It sucks. Again, the hundred day the hundred days are almost up, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think he has like what two weeks left. I don't know to be honest. Because he took office what uh, January like fifteenth, right? Somewhere around there. Yeah, they're almost up. Um. Yeah, man. Sometimes I look at Biden again, and I think to myself, and I and I hope his neurologic or whatever he may have. I hope it improves. I mean, that usually is never the case. You usually don't get better neurologically with age. No. But I I wish he had maybe not. I don't think you can match Trump's like fucking crazy Buffalo brain charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo brain charisma. But he uh. But I wish that. Uh, Joe at least at least had that you know awareness of what's going on yeah but sometimes I hear the speech that he gives and he just goes out of it and bro what happened is his fucking press conference bro he's fucking trying to say something and he goes uh anyway yeah what the fuck who knows what he's dealing with man cause there was times where I watched the debate with Trump and he I think it was the first one where I was like, oh shit, oh shit. No. He grabbed his nuts and he, you know, he. I really don't. Just because he said, oh, come on, man. No. No, I wasn't, come on, man. It was the way he was, like, uh, answering uh, that dude's questions. I really I really don't feel like that those those debates were, were unbiased. I feel like they were very one sided. I feel like they were. I feel like Trump was debating the, the moderator and fucking Biden at the same time. Personally, that's what I feel like. I haven't just watched them once. I watched them uh, quite a few times, yeah. and sometimes I feel like you know what? The only one I feel like wasn't wasn't biased was the vice president one with Kamala and, and Pence. I thought that one was not biased. I like Trump. I mean, I like Pence. And Pence was an assassin, bro. He fucking yeah. let those have it. He wrapped her up in an omelet. She wrapped her up, bro. <laughs> her and the moderator just wrapped them up and like, yeah, hey, I'm making you guys scrambled eggs right now, dog. <laughs> But that one of one of the Trump and, and Joe Biden debates, I was like, Trump just uh, interrupts. So as a moderator, you kind of do have to hold ground. But the same thing could be said for the moderators. How many moderators were interrupting? How many? That one that one chick, that one Indian chick. How many times was she interrupting when they were having the whole uh, immigration talk? When he was trying to bring up the fact that hey, they brought up photos, they brought up photos from 2014 when he was when he was vice president. She tried dodging it. You know? She tried dodging it and not letting him keep on, like, further explain. You know? But when it came to Biden's attack, when he could go and, like, oh, well, we didn't separate families and we didn't stuff them in the cages like your guys did, she was letting him go for it. Let him finish and then said, oh, do you have any response for that, Mr. President? You can't say that's not one-sided. 
So you're basically gonna let the other dude finish his whole rant. But yeah, when the other dude wants to wants to share on him back, you're not gonna let him. Like how you how is that not one sided? You get me? That's why I felt like those I felt like those debates were just very very biased. That Chris Wallace dude does uh he's a raging simp. Yeah, he's a, he's a simp. He was a simp for uh for Biden. Yeah, he's a raging simp. Um, but man, we could go all day about this. No, I definitely think I don't we know could. If you, you noticed that? I think we could. But we gotta bring up LA. What about LA? Well, they're finally opening up. Yeah, uh, your boy Newsom. Fucking jackass, huh? Your boy. He's not my boy. He's your boy. <laughs> He's not my boy. He's your boy. <laughs> He's not my boy. Hey, your boy Garcetti. Fuck Garcetti too. He's a fucking idiot. He's your boy. He's not my boy. <laughs> Hell no, he's a fucking jackass too. They should recall his dumb ass. <laughs> fucking stupid motherfucker. I was an idiot. Simp ass food. Oh, what did he say to that poor woman, her restaurant situation? He goes, Oh, it breaks my heart. Remember? Remember he comments some dumb shit on like online? Oh. Where the lady that was recording, like, how is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, because of the movie studio that yeah. was actually able They're to do They're doing the same, same thing. thing I'm doing, but theirs is allowed. And he's commented, like, Oh, it breaks my heart like hey bro fuck your heart can you fix the situation yeah, like bitch. like they're identical let her run her fucking business like the situation they were right next to each oh, other and they're basically identical and they were right next to each other they had almost the same type of canopy tents same plastic chairs and tables and they were right next to each other so the same wind they could probably bring particles or whatever you're gonna say can probably bring them that way too yeah so virtually basically identical but uh yeah so you're two boys yeah, I, now they're fucking finally gonna start opening, which doesn't make any sense. They're they're gonna wait till June fifteenth to officially open everything, where there's gonna be no restrictions, no nothing. Like, bro, if you're trying to manage your recall efforts and try to make sure you don't get recalled, bro, I would have been like, hey, dude, I think it's about time we stop playing this fucking stupid ass game of closing everything. Mm -hmm. I already got caught not wearing a mask. I already got caught violating the fucking the the curfew and and the six feet distance and. Not being in a in a in a group going out, I already fucked that up. I already got caught having my businesses open, my wineries, while other wineries were forced to close, and breweries. I think I should just fuck it, hey bro. Shut it is up. where it is. We're just gonna open this bitch. Like, what the fuck are you trying to do? Like, really, what are you trying to do? Like, you're not gonna get. You're not getting anywhere. Like, you're just pissing more people off by 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 seeing this shit. People are going like, really fool? You're gonna wait till June? To open all this stupid shit when you could just do it now. And it's like now it's at the point now where businesses aren't really listening to this whole bullshit anymore. Where they're just opening, they're going like, hey, yeah, fuck it, we're open now. Like we don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, dude, uh fuck man. I just I, I I'm not content with with the way the shit was handled in our state, in our city. Um, I feel like the like guys. Garcetti was trying to make people snitch on each other. Yeah, I feel like when we counted on and on our leaders, like, hey, dude, now's the time. Show us why you were elected. Put on your fucking cape, Garcetti. Put on uh, Gavin Newsom. Put on your fucking cape and show put your on, state. Get your mage staff out, bro, and do some. You shall not pass up in this bitch. Show your state. Like, come on. Make the people want to make a fucking Mount Rushmore just for you. Yeah, dude. And Garcetti, make people want to make a fucking statue for you. And that's the thing. Like, they're not they're not doing it now. You know, it's like, how stupid do you look now? One, you being the voter that voted for his dumbass. And two, being the representative. And you're like, bro, you still think you represented your state good? You fucking didn't. You fucking didn't. Like, the, when the whole fire started happening, bro... How many times did people say, even experts said that what could do, what could have been done to prevent this shit was wildlife management. The whole reason why those fucking fires spread for because they didn't, they didn't manage wildlife and they just left dead fucking rotting decaying dried up trees stay there. So what happened? They'll catch on fire and it's a fucking hellhole. You're fucked. It's going to fucking spread like crazy. And oh, what do you know? 10 feet away is another dead fucking tree that's drying up and now it's going to catch on fire too. And then it spreads. And the worst part is he admits to that. He admits to that going like, no, we could have done something better. And, you know, I agree. Like, really, motherfucker? You look stupid on TV admitting that shit. And you're basically telling your guys, 
we have a feeling we could have prevented this, but we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so we spent millions of taxpayer dollars having a forest firefighters to go turn off those fucking flames. And shout out to those firefighters for doing that wonderful job doing that shit, too. Yeah. But it's like, how stupid do you look? Very. It's fucking retarded. And it's like, I don't... I feel like this food just can't do anything anymore to fucking save his shit. He's fucked. I feel like they are gonna, they're going to get rid of him. You know? They're going to get rid of him. And it's like... This is... This kind of falls on me being a... Being a, a... A gun enthusiast. But it's like... How many people started panic buying guns here in California because the whole COVID thing? And shit shut down. They started panic buying guns like a motherfucker and they're still doing it right now. They're doing it more knowing that Biden is trying to do an executive order... Uh, regarding gun control so they're trying to do it now they're trying to beat the punch and say hey I already bought my gun too bad you know and this fucking asshole goes ahead and said oh well gun stores aren't essential and same thing with the with the mayor of LA says oh nah no people people don't have any business buying any firearms what makes what gives you the right to tell people that they don't have the right to defend themselves in the middle of a pandemic when fear is going rampant who are you it's like if I told if I if I told you, Jay, hey, dude, you want to get a gun? Yeah, well, I don't think you should. But you got a gun, sickly. Oh, I got a gun, but I bought it before a pandemic. No, 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 even better. I have private security. Yeah, I got private armed security. But you can get a gun. Yeah. Because I don't think it's essential. But you can look at videos of how I have people that it breaks my heart that I'm partly responsible for shutting down their business. Yeah. It just breaks my heart. Uh, you know, my heart goes out to them. <sighs> but uh, hey, okay, Garcetti, if it breaks your heart so much, can you see that the situation is virtually identical? We're right next door to each other. You let them open. It. Can I? Can I open my business? Can I tell my clients that they can come in and eat and all that stuff? No, no, no. <laughs> but you probably misheard me. Just so you know, it breaks my heart, and my heart goes out to you. That's it. Yeah, basically, my heart goes out to you. And just know that if your business is open, I encourage people to snitch on you. So just know that the full extent of the law is going to put its baton right up your ass. But my heart still goes out to you. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. And now even law enforcement doesn't really support Garcetti anymore. And after he made those cutbacks on, on, on the sheriff's department, I don't think it's as ridiculous as that vaccine passport. <laughs> Do you know about it? Yeah. What what is like I'm not I'm not fully versed in it. What is it? What's going on with the whole vaccine passport? I really don't know. I heard at first it was gonna be digital, but then I hear that digital thing is only gonna happen like in the UK and Europe. I really don't know about uh here. I think it's gonna be a mixture of, of if it isn't digital, it's gonna be uh like a like an ID card. It's but, gonna be either but, but who proposed it? Like, like, what's the deal with this? Like, what, what's going on? I think it was up for it was it was an idea way back. We're talking like early on in the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah, that was one of the one of the things that uh, I heard Dr. Fauci and them talk about. Like, was up for consideration. You mean Emperor Falsi, Dr. Fauci, <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Fauci, Palpatine Fauci, Palpatine Fauci. He really thinks he's like a fucking emperor or something huh bro it, i went from really liking that guy he has he has one of those complexes be like most likely because he don't wear the pants in his relationship in his household and he basically gets like treated like a bitch by his wife <laughs> he takes it out on the on the american people bro <laughs> through his expertise <laughs> he goes well i can't keep my wife on check i'm gonna take it out on the people right yeah but they, they were talking about um vaccine passports Early on, I remember this. Early on, we're talking about like maybe. This is news to me, dude. I never heard about this shit. Okay, so twenty twenty March was when we really started feeling the effects of it. Because March, if I remember correctly, that's when we shut down. Yeah, I think so. so they were talking about this shit around like May. Mm. Vaccine I didn't passports. Know. I didn't even know. Because they were feeling the effects like of shutting shit down, like economically, like damn, people are losing their jobs, millions unemployed. Fucking look at all these stadiums that we could have this this these businesses could have been making thousands and thousands and thousands the night after night, right? I heard I heard Disneyland is losing millions a day. I heard that too. I was tripping on that shit. 
I don't believe it, but supposedly they're losing like millions. Well, to be fair, like, like maybe like maybe three, four million bucks a day. To be fair, though, that's how much they're losing on the parks. But if you remember, when did Disney Plus come into effect? It didn't kind of happen before the pandemic, though. So, like early on, like I think it was before the pandemic, but it wasn't too long before the pandemic. Pro- no, 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 probably not, probably not. But I heard it was back in before the pandemic. Yeah, by my mental estimates, it was either right around the pandemic or a little before. Mm-hmm. But that was a big money generator. Yeah, they had incentives like, oh, we got exclusivity. We took our shit off for Netflix and we'll put it here. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. No one plays our movies but us. And and hey, they, that, and I just thought they made it super affordable. Lockdown came around. So they they marketed it to parents. Hey, you fucking your little fucking kids running around the house all day. Get Show it. Disney Plus. Uh, you guys want background noise while you fuck Disney Plus. Uh, hey man, you just lost your job, bro. Got nothing to do. We're giving you the Mandalorian. Shoot up heroin while you watch Disney Plus. <laughs> you could chase the dragon while you watch the dragon. <laughs> and blame it on the dragon. <laughs> and then uh, how many fucking like. People were off of school, locked down. Yeah, they shut schools down. Whether you're in fucking college, college people like Disney Plus, high school. I like Disney Plus, bro. Middle school, elementary. So you have basically almost all demographics, all demographics, all ages. Doesn't matter the gender. You got a lot of people. They can't make it to your amusement parks. Disney Plus. Don't trip. We got you. So I don't know how much they really lost. I don't know. Well, I'm going off of what they've been losing through the parks. So yeah, I, like, I don't really know. I don't remember enough. They actually, obviously, algorithms or you know, it evens out. They have that stupid uh, partnership with uh, Hulu and fucking ESPN Plus. All oh, right. Yeah, you can do that whole bundle pair. I have it. I, although I don't watch ESPN, and I think it's retarded, but <laughs> I think it's stupid. Yeah. But yeah, you make a good point. It's like yeah, you make a good point. It's true. I never thought about Disney Plus. Obviously. Um, all the the parks they're losing hella 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 profit. I'm just gonna say I actually I, I actually mix those two words. They're losing a lot on revenue. Yeah. But I think overall the profit is, the profit is decent. Yeah. Not as probably great as you would want it. They're to still be, suffering though. Well, yeah. Because obviously they want. Well, make luckily way more. you know, luckily you know, their Orlando one and you know Disney World that one didn't close at all. So people are going like a motherfucker over there. Bro, people love DeSantis. The fuck is that? The governor. Oh yeah, dude. I I would love. I dude. I'm not even from there, and I love the motherfucker. I love the dude from fucking Texas, dude. I'm not even in Texas. Abbott. Yeah, I fucking love Abbott. I wish we had a governor like Abbott here in California. And hopefully, a new governor, whoever runs for it, bro, has those same ideas as. as Guess who I heard? Who? It's probably just a spoof. But the supposedly Caitlyn Jenner, because that's was that her name? Caitlyn Jenner is considering governor run. The fuck's so good about that? He, she's a uh, Republican. Doesn't mean shit. She, she's Why probably are straight you so up. So close to dismiss. If you don't know her politics, you don't know. I'm, I'm never one. I never heard it. But I'm going based off of fucking uh, keeping up with Kardashians. Fool. I feel like Secretary of the State is gonna be is gonna be Chris Jenner. Then the Treasurer is gonna be Kim K after she got divorced from Ye. And Chloe is probably, you know, going to be the spokesperson or some shit. And the other chick is probably going to be doing the fucking sign language for fucking Caitlyn, bro. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a shit show. But bullshit aside, we don't know. No, no, you're right. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, it's a toss-up. I, I really wouldn't. Just based off of the, the whole keeping up with the Kardashians, I wouldn't vote for her. Just on, Just on that basis. If anybody has tried to pull that bullshit about her being trans, I give a fuck about that. You know, I'd, I'd welcome that. I don't give a shit, you know? As long as, you know, you you come out with some decent policies and shit and you don't want to go ahead and fuck, fuck everything up. Hey, you can be as gay or as transgender or as lesbian as you want. I don't give a fuck. I'm cool with it. But so, yeah. no, I wouldn't... I would not fucking go for them. I like... What, some, some people I see promising, bro, are like... Some some chick named Laura Smith, who, who was going to run for governor. I feel like she's pretty good. Uh, some He used to be the representative for Orange County. His name was John Morlock. I feel like he's promising. And they say even uh, 
something Faulkner. I guess he was the mayor of San Diego. Something like that. I hear that supposedly he did a great job being the mayor of San Diego. Because they say the new guy is fucking garbage. They say it's garbage as um, the mayor of fucking Seattle? Ah, uh, no. I don't think they've had a summer of love there yet. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think so. But he's garbage in the sense that he hasn't been able to combat the homelessness. Um, there's, uh, like, the, those subsidies that, that are part of uh, San Diego County. Some of them do have, have like, their their police to, to citizen ratio for is low as shit. Like, if I'm not mistaken, I think... I may be wrong on this, but I think Chula Vista is... I think they only have, like, 15 fucking police officers. And that city, dude, is huge. They have, like, a fucking... I think their fuck minimum was probably, like, 100K population. How the fuck are 12 fucking cops gonna fucking manage that? Or 15 cops? You think that's good? That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like a shit show. You're talking and and Chula Vista is huge. I've been in Chula Vista. It's fucking huge. So it's like you got a lady over here mugged. So you send all twelve cops over to go help her. But then you get another call that ten minutes away, there's some dude getting murdered. And like fuck, what do you do? You know, you literally have to just prioritize and be like, hey, well, how many sheriff? Do they have sheriffs around there? No, it's not sheriffs. It's uh, it's police, police department. That's what it's like. Ugh. You know. I'm not saying it's the mayor of San Diego's fault. I just don't know whose fault it is. You know? So it's just like, it's crazy. Yeah. So that's what I've heard, supposedly. But those uh, vaccine passports, man, I don't I don't know how far they're going to make it with that, that proposal. I don't know how far they're going to make it. I don't know how practical it is. Um, it's, uh, I don't want to say it, but it's like, it's like Gestapo-y. Why? Because they're making you, they're basically forcing you to identify yourself through this pap- this paperwork. And if you don't provide the proper documentation, then you're not going to get the privilege of eating at a diner or watching a movie or going to a concert. Doesn't that sound very familiar? It sounds Jewy. It sounds Jewy? Yeah. How do you do that to the Jews? You gotta provide documentation first. Hey, you're Jew. Oh, sorry, bro. You're not coming in. Then what do they do? Well, now you're wearing you're wearing an armband, so they can know you're a Jew. And then what happened there? You were treated like shit. And so eventually they said, "All right, well, this person here wearing this armband is registered as so and so, and he lives in this apartment with this X amount of people. So, all right, round them up, get them out. All right, get them out, bro." Sorry, bro, we're taking you to a nice camp to go work. Or we're taking you to a nice ghetto to make room for the war effort. You know what happened? They fucking killed them off. I'm not saying that they're going to kill off people here, but that's why I said it sounds Gestapo-y. Where it's like, so you're telling me because I can't provide documentation that I got vaccinated, I'm not going to be able to, to enjoy the liberties that other people have because I decided not to vaccinate myself. You know? How's that any different? I mean, although it's completely different in the sense that you're not getting killed for it, but you know they're already going through through that avenue. It's kind of stupid. That's what I think. I that's why I'm kind of I'm against it. Like I don't see the point in that. I really don't. I don't think it's very realistic to. Why can't we just? I don't know. Have like something on our ID. I I don't know, but it just for a whole other but it's form. Why? Why do we have to have whole, that for a whole other form of identi- identification? Is but even then, why do we have to have that? There's such a thing already as immunization records. Why can't they just put that in your immunization records and that's it? Is there space in those? Yeah, it's like, bro. Why can't they just put them in your immunization record, where the only people that have access to that is your doctor and yourself, right? So how about if there's a private business owner, let's say a fucking like a candy store or whatever, and you want to go in there with your kid, and they don't want to risk non-vaccinated people that might fucking be carrying the virus and infect other people in there. Okay. Do they or do they not have the right to take precautions? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, like I feel like they possibly do have the the, the, the right to, to, to have precautions. So they possibly have the right. But how are you going to base that off of? How are you going to go ahead and be Very sure? Very simple. 
and be sure. Right now, I'm, I'm, wait, 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 I'm wait, advocating wait, for wait, the wait. vaccine. How are you? How are you going ahead and making sure that? Because you're not going to have enough time, or you're, or are you really going to be willing to hire somebody that's going to be specifically checking for immunization records or passports? It's you as a as business a, as owner, a, okay, or as an. But you don't have an enterprise. Let's say you don't have an enterprise. Let's say you're a small business owner. Yeah, shop. Let's say you're a small business. Let's say you're a shop. Do you think you having a shop have the time to be checking immunization passports and still attend your customers that are already there that showed their passport? A shop. That's that's practical. Yeah, have somebody that's right there at the by the door. And is it cost effective though? Is it cost effective to have that? You're basically paying somebody just to check immunization records, and because they're not even, it's not even your bit. It's not even their business. They're not going to take it seriously. They're they're not going to say, "Oh, well, let me check." Okay, you're good. Let's go. Well, I'll, I'm, I've at least I've at least gone to 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 shops where they require ID, and they basically go, "All right, go. All right, go." You know, and then what happens? Oh, there was an outbreak in this candy store. Well, I thought you were checking your guys. Well, we were. And then they questioned the dude that was checking. And, oh, well, I actually was, and I was just skimming through them. Like, there's no guarantee that 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 your guys aren't gonna are gonna properly go through all those fucking. Well, there's no guarantee of anything. Yeah. So why waste the money? How how is it a waste of money if you can't guarantee it though? You know. Okay. Again, there's no guarantee of anything. You, yeah. Then nothing is guaranteed. So how is it cost effective? Do you think it has to be cost effective to be able to do that? And how would you quantify overspending on that? Through that, how yeah. would you quantify? Oh, you're actually at a loss because there's somebody checking for because a you're paying somebody to check for vaccinations. Yet that's not that say, wouldn't be their only role. What would be? I gave you the example at a shop. I said, for example, a candy shop. Okay. I'm not saying, hey, candy shop, go and hire a fucking. Uh, and then I and then I explain to, and then I explain to you how is that candy shop going to do it when they also have to take care of customers? Are they going to do uh, uh, wait times again? Are they going to make people wait in line again just so they can make sure to check their passport? I'm not sure, but I don't know how many candy people shops you've gone to. People wouldn't want to wait. Not just one person there. I know this, but think about how many people go to candy shop. I'm pretty sure you've gone to a candy shop also where there's not just one customer, right? Right, yeah, dude. I don't know how many businesses you stepped into. People wait in line. Yes, but people still browse, right? People still look around and see what they want to buy, right? Right. Before they decide to say, okay, I'm going to grab a, a bag full of Snickers and a bag full of butterscotch candies. Then I'm going to go wait in line to pay. But when they're not waiting in line to pay, they're out there browsing around like what they're going to buy, right? Right, exactly. And so the person that I'm hypothetically saying is checking... Are they just standing there? Well, they're going to have to be standing in, in, in the front of the door, right? To, hey, before you enter, let me check your And who passport. knows? Maybe they don't stand in front of the door. Maybe the person walks into the store, and I don't know. There's like an automated system that, that they present the ID to, and so it, it says, it would, okay, cost, you're good to it would cost It would cost the, 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 the store owner money to buy that automated system, right? And maybe that's uh, subsidized. Subsidized through who? The state. If they did provide that. But right now... We're already going on to the we're already going on the realms of very hypothetical because so far there hasn't been anything about a, a system. It's right now so far from what we've been saying it's about paper. So we're already going in the realms of the super hypothetical when it comes to the system. And I don't the think machine. I don't. I mean, who knows? That's true. It's hypothetical, but, but I think for it to be somewhat effective, it has to be a good pitch. I don't know if you've gone out to eat where they have the menu in the table. They don't have mm-hmm. a paper menu. You scan that. Yeah. So we have that technology. There's a name for that. I forgot what the name for that. But yeah, it's like QR code. QR code. There you go. Yeah. Maybe they throw some of that in there. A QR code. You verify. You walk in. Bloop. You scan it. Okay. It says you're good to go. You scan it and it says bullshit. Red. You, you're not vaccinated. Hey, sorry, sir. But, but we QR, have codes a- are, QR codes are, 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 they could easily fraud them. But you could you could fake a QR code. That's what I'm saying. Like, if people implement shit like that, it's it's if people could fake IDs that are scannable, you think people can't fake a fucking a, a vaccine a vaccine passport or or a or a vaccine QR code? I don't know. I don't like, know. Yeah, that, that, mean, that'll open the business to. I mean, I don't want to say more criminals, but yeah, more criminals where people are gonna be like, hey, bro. 
I know you don't want to get the fucking vaccine because of whatever ex belief you have or because you don't see the point in it because you already got the virus, which is true. Don't trip. I got you. Give me 40 bucks for and I'll send you a QR code that's scannable. We could even test it. I even got a fucking machine that I got from my homie that works with that, that works with those subsidiaries that, that are putting those machines out there in, in businesses because everybody got the hookup. It's not like if it's not possible to get a fucking QR code from some, or a machine from somebody. We'll scan it. You'll see. Scan it. Ooh, blue. Oh, J40 vaccinated. Again, that happens all the time in life already. So that's what I'm saying. So I Why? think that's going to be a small chunk of the majority. I of really don't think it's going to be a small chunk. I actually do. It, especially knowing. Not everybody has a hook. Especially especially knowing how many people out there are, um, are not trusting the vaccine. You know? I'm not saying the vaccine is a bad idea. I'm just not going to get it because I already got fucking COVID. What the fuck's the point of me? You know? I feel like people that haven't gotten COVID, I feel like, yeah, you should get vaccinated. But what I'm saying is, why are you still going to vaccinate people that don't want to get vaccinated because they got the virus already? They already developed the antibodies. And again... The vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting the virus. From what I've heard, people that think, oh, I already got it, so I'm good. That's not necessarily the case. Viruses mutate. There's variants. Yes. So... And there's That's people the that with the vaccine. There's people that got hit by the virus the first time. Oh, cool, bro! I just cocked it up. I just farted it out. I'm good. Yeah. They get it the second time. It fucks them up where they yeah. can't walk. The same, thing, taste. the same thing could be with the vaccine. You get the vaccine where it's supposed to minimize your. It's supposed to minimize your symptoms when you do get the virus. But then what happens? People get the vaccine. They get the fucking virus, and it doesn't minimize your symptoms. It fucks them up even more. How many? How many? That's a. How many cases are happening like that? That's I can't a small tell percentage. You. I, I can't tell There's you. There's an effective it is. rate. But that is the that is the case. Same thing with people that have caught that have caught COVID, developed antibodies, and then caught COVID again, and it came worse. You know again, what I mean? but those aren't big percentages. Not fifty fifty for either or. It's minuscule for it's either a small or percentage for either or. So okay. for people that caught the virus, for people that got the vaccine. So that's like me saying, "Hey, let's shut everything down, everything down," because a no, small percentage no, are people are getting sick. No, but see, it's, I'm it's not a small about, percentage. But I'm not talking of about shutting down. What do you, but, I'm but not talking about shutting do, down. What are you trying to risk, the majority or the minority? I'm trying to go for the majority. Let's try and help the majority. Yeah. Not you fuck everything up just for the minority. No, not at all. So just like I but wouldn't look, say this should be down. Even, we're not even arguing the same thing. I know we're not. We're definitely we're not arguing. We're the same definitely thing. Not I'm not arguing, arguing about. Thing. I'm not arguing about not getting vaccinated. I'm not arguing that. You're talking about. We're talking I feel, about like, I feel like people. I feel like people should get vaccinated. If you if you haven't caught the virus, get the vaccine. So why wouldn't you get vaccinated? Because I already caught the virus. You can still catch it again. I'm still gonna catch it regardless if I got the if I got the vaccine or if I didn't. And there's no guarantee that my that my symptoms are getting minimized. If I didn't catch Again, it. Again, there's no guarantee of anything. Exactly. That's a that's so they call I, it a tautological argument. Yeah. There's no so guarantee if of I anything feel like, ever. So if I feel like there's no point in me getting it, then that's it. There's no point in me getting it. The like same you say, freedom a business should have. If I want to implement a system that scans people to where we can... We're not going to save everybody. Someone might all. still get sick in the store, whether employee yes. or a client. Yes. But if we can help the majority... There's no guarantee you're it? helping the majority, though. That's the thing. There's no guarantee you're helping the majority. You're thinking you're helping the majority, dude. All but there's it no guarantees. takes is a all 51 I'm saying, to 49 all I'm saying, and that's the majority. All I'm saying is 51 over 49. That's the majority. Look, all I'm saying is, I feel like it's not cost effective, personally. But you, know, I you don't know do what it costs. I wouldn't do it. I don't know what it costs. That's what I'm saying, based on my opinion. I'm not going off of facts. You're going here. You're going here making this argument like if I'm going off of facts. I'm not going off of facts. I'm trying to make my argument okay. as factual as possible. Okay. Well, I'm Obviously not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it factual. Nor am I trying to go factual. I'm going opinionated. My personal opinion is it's not cost effective. I don't think so. I don't think it's cost effective for my business to be hiring people or hire one dude, one motherfucker, hypothetically, to be checking for for vaccine passports when I could just have that guy instead helping customers. I could have him clean the floor. I could have him doing inventory, stocking the stocking the shelves. I could have him doing anything else rather than having to check uh, uh, vaccination passports. Personally, that's what I think. Why am I? Because that's that is going to be a full time thing where someone has to be checking those passports. I honestly can't say that it won't be. How would it not be? Because who knows how much traffic you get in your store? You got to think about how popular your store is, how popular it's not, the place where it's at. If you're in downtown where you're getting all kinds of tourists going over there, you're going to get a high clientele. Maybe, maybe not. But let's go off of the fact that you're in the middle. Where you don't get a fuck ton of people, you don't get overcrowded in your store, but you get a decent amount of people a day. 
you're going to have some you're going to have to have somebody check those shits all day every day. Obviously you're going to have one guy for 16 hours, but you'll have a guy all right, well you're going to be here for 4 hours. You're going to then next was going to be here for us, but you're going to have somebody checking it all day until you guys close. What I'm saying is I personally don't think that's cost effective in the slightest cuz I could have those hours instead of having to check a goddamn paper or a QR code I could have those guys doing something more productive, making sure everything's sanitized, making sure everything's clean as possible for customers, making sure when I see customers touching shit and they don't take it, all right, I need to wipe it real quick. All right, cool. I I would, me personally, I feel like that would be more cost effective than just having to do just fucking stand there. And again, I do, if there's one thing I agree with you right now is that we're definitely arguing very different things. I've worked in a restaurant, the same person that was wiping down tables, uh, sweeping the floors at the Chipotle where I worked, which was sometimes very busy, wasn't just doing that. They were also cashier. They were also uh, had time to go and clean the bathroom. And you so have them doing different they things. They weren't just standing there just checking one thing. There's no, I can't think of a job title in a restaurant where you just do one thing. The cashier was also cleaning the bathrooms, was also taking out trash, was also wiping down tables, okay. was also greeting customers, but was also guys getting feedback. You guys weren't checking passport fucking dude uh, how, vaccine passports okay, I mean. again we're still not hypothetical how time consuming is that think about it and if you just, just said it, and you just it. said no hold on you just said oh well if it's, it's a busy restaurant okay well then if it's a busy restaurant more busy no means, I said you gotta means more clientele you gotta think about if means, it's busy I didn't say more, it is I didn't well, say it is more downtime for that one person it. well then there's more downtime for that one person have to, more opportunity to go different things you would have to say hey let me see your ID you show your ID let me see your passport here's here's my passport you got to make sure that all that shit matches. Okay. J40, J40, birthday. Okay. Okay. Most likely it's going to have your fucking address. It doesn't take this on. Most likely it's going to have... No, no. Obviously. But you're going to have to verify that both... Okay, good. You're good. Go. How do, how do, how do they check uh, your ID when you go buy alcohol? They don't okay, take... Okay, but they're not, take, they're not taking two forms of ID. They're, it's not like it's going to have your ID. Hey, scan my ID and you're going to see that I'm vaccinated. Hey, bro. No. When you go buy alcohol, how long does it take for them to check ID just? just they scan them. Boom, they slide them right here. Pass, okay. go. Two seconds, three seconds. Multiply that by two. Three even. Four even. Okay, but this Ten is... Ten seconds? What, dude, we're talking about a new process. This is something new. This is something... This that's going to be implemented been, right now. This, is, this isn't something that's been that's been going on forever where you just got to... All you got to do is not even give a fuck about the name. Just match the person that's giving you the ID and look at the birthday. Cool. You're going to have to match the information and make sure that the person that's giving you that vaccine passport because I'm seriously going to take it. They're not going to take that shit so nonchalant. They want to make sure that, hey, the person you're checking, you got to make sure that it's him. Because you're telling me if they don't implement that and a, and, a, and a company fails to do so to properly check that it is the motherfucker there and it turns out it wasn't, you don't think they're going to get hit with something? Who knows? Exactly. Vaccination companies, for we're them go, to we're take going on off, the risk, I'm Johnson going off Johnson... Of, uh, Pfizer for them to take on their risk. You think they were in a rush to do that? I'm going off. I'm going off. I'm gonna go off with. They are gonna get hit if they didn't check that shit and verify properly that the motherfucker that gave them that passport and that ID matched. I I don't know. I'll go off with hit. that. I'll go off with that because if you don't ma- if you don't match uh, uh, the ID with the person that's giving you when you're selling your alcohol or cigarettes, you get fucked. You could possibly get shut down for that because you're selling it to a minor. All right, you're getting shut down for that because they do that with alcohol. They do that with cigarettes when you sell it to somebody that isn't under the age of. That's not over the age of 21. Dude, there, it's not the same legislation for alcohol, cigarettes, and what's going on with the pandemic. It's not. People don't say- get shut down for somebody walking into a store with a mask. They get kicked out. The store doesn't get shut down. But I never bought a mask. Okay, but it has to do with pandemic, right? It has to do with somebody possibly getting somebody sick in there, right? I'm talking about the verification. I'm talking about if they didn't verify that that fucking ID and that passport matched and they were to get caught. Let's say it was by mistake. There could still be serious repercussions on it. Could be. That's what I'm saying. Could be. I don't yeah. know. There's, there could be very serious repercussions. I highly doubt that they're going to put this legislature, if they did, and they said, okay, we're going to make sure, and you guys have to be on it. I highly doubt that they're going to say, hey, well, you didn't verify this? Food? No, I didn't. Okay, you're good. No, I feel like they're going to take it very seriously since they actually took the time to vote it into Congress, vote it into law, and be like, hey, we're doing this shit. Like, we got to take this shit seriously. I highly doubt that they're going to be so nonchalant about somebody not verifying it and possibly getting somebody uh, uh, contaminated in their shop. Who knows? Who knows, yeah, but I don't see that. I don't see the possibility of you going through all the trouble of making a vaccination passport, giving it to all the American people, and then just be like, whatever about it, 
when people aren't fucking double checking the, the, the information. So then what was the fucking point to begin with? If well, you're that's not like gonna saying, be what's checking? the point of IDing people for buying alcohol? Yeah. It's all faith based. It's all faith based. You're hoping that people follow laws, rules, things that are implemented. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's going to be people that don't. Just like you said, there's going to be people that have connects. Hey, I know how to bypass this. I know a person know, that knows a person that knows how to force this. That knows how to make fake money. Yeah. But you're banking on the well, idea that most, that most people are going to follow the laws and follow the rules. If the majority of them do, good. We have system. We have faith in the system. For those that don't, well, we're going to come up with some punishment. Sometimes they'll even slip through those cracks. People evade laws, evade evade yeah. punishment, you know? And that's where that's where I run back to do you think it's cost effective? How much how much taxpayer money do you think that's gonna that's gonna go into that? Because the government where's the government gonna get the money from? Cause it's not like if companies are gonna say, Hey, I volunteer to print all your shit for free. Not for free, but the same way companies like Johnson and or not not Johnson, General Electric, General Motors, they were making fucking ventilators. Yeah, the government knows how to call on people and say, "Look, we're gonna subsidize this for you." Yeah, they were getting paid by the government through tax dollars, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess that's how the government okay. pays people. Yeah, so they get paid the tax dollars. So the same thing's gonna happen here. They're gonna have to fucking if they subsidize or if they do it themselves, it's gonna go through tax dollars. How well, much that's that why cost? that's why Biden's talking about a higher uh, tax. And do you think it's cost effective? Well, you really, you really think we should be getting taxed more for something that? that I don't think I'm, I don't think we're gonna get taxed more. How do you think we won't? They're talking about a certain criteria, a certain amount of money that you have to make. Yeah, but they're talking about rich folk. Yeah, they tell you that, dude, based off of 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 you not wanting to be like, oh no, they're gonna fuck us too. No, they're gonna do that. That way, they prevent you from making money. That way, they'd be like, oh, I don't want to be a millionaire because I'm gonna get taxed too. Nah, for no, for everybody listening, don't ever fucking uh, let nobody prevent you from wanting to be a millionaire. And you don't think stuff like that's gonna prevent you from being a millionaire? Nope. How not? It's not gonna prevent me. No, not not you, wanting. not you specifically, but like people going like, oh, dude, well, think about it. I want to be a millionaire because I'm gonna get taxed too much. Well, yeah, that's demoralizing for for certain people and like certain mindsets. Yeah, which is the vast majority of people. A lot of people are happy with their nine to fives, which is cool, you know. But then when they bitch about money and you tell them, hey, well, go get it. Oh, no, I don't want to get taxed. Why not? Well, because Biden said if if you make more than X amount of money. Which I don't really think it's the millionaires. I think they're gonna they're gonna cap that shit at like a, if you make six figures, probably not a hundred k, but if you make six figures, that's when you're gonna start getting taxed. People aren't gonna want that. People are gonna be like, "Fuck that shit! I'm getting taxed too much." All right, take the the vaccine passport. It's not the best idea. It's not. Um, and the simple fact that you are rolling with it, I don't. I never no, thought you rolled. I'm it. not rolling with it, but I do. I do believe in making fair arguments. I don't see. I don't see the shit fair being made. Shit, shit, really, bro. Really, bro. When you just compare it to, oh, they'll get shut down just like fucking selling shit to a fucking uh, um, uh, alcohol to a minor. But I know that once they got they got caught for it, they got shut down. Like there was no, uh, oh, we're not selling alcohol anymore to anybody. Like nah, they never got strict or anything like that. They got shut the fuck down. Like they got shut down for that. That's what I'm saying. I personally feel like if they did do this, they would take it that seriously. I know. The same way. No, because states are doing what other states aren't allowing. Which is? There's no... They're not all 50 states are in agreement. No, no, yeah. Some states are in full lock. We're in full lockdown. Some, Some states weren't. said partial. But if they make it into federal law... Dude, isn't federally, like, marijuana illegal? federally I or believe. at some point but I then think, i think it is but then states were still saying hey you know what well, we're not really federally going to enforce it it's up to each state so something can be federal and the state says yeah we're not really with that yeah you're right we're texas you're right we're kind of our own thing well it's still legal in texas no not weed but i'm saying even like a vaccine passport and what i think look at the look at it geographically some rural areas it really doesn't make sense to shut down big metropolitan areas like la and new york either way they fumbled it. and what's done is done yeah i could i could say whatever i want i could grab whatever i want out of my ass and say it, it doesn't matter what's done is done but i think about it 
And this this goes against uh, some of the stuff I've said. And I'm like, who knows? Hypothetically speaking, maybe what would have been best for for certain areas, not even states, just areas like New York and L.A. is for, for Trump. I would have trusted if he said it. Hey, listen, this goes against even what I would normally say. We're going to ask of everybody in L.A. and everybody in New York, our two most populous areas, give us give a two week shutdown. We're going to find a way to fucking have all workers, maybe compensate or whatever. We'll do it through the PPP or whatever system. We don't want this thing to spread. Well, they kind of did it, did they not? California was still they're still in a fucking shutdown. They did it through a tier-based system where, you know, if they were only allowing essential businesses to be open. It's not like if all businesses were open. There's certain... There's the way things are. So and they kind of... Like, I, I, I get you. Like, they didn't completely shut down every single thing. Like, yeah. And, but they kind of did. Because it's not like if everywhere you went, everything was open. Well, how much things... How, how, how many fuckers are allowed when you kind of do something? Yeah. You know? It, and it's, it's, it's crazy because, okay, something that's very interesting to me is how we look at China. Look at China. Look at what they did. Okay. Um, they said, we're going to shut down this whole area. No one leaves uh, the, the city of Wuhan. They quarantined it. Yeah, no one comes in. They didn't shut it down. They quarantined it. Different. Okay, what's the difference? Because they quarantined it, meaning they don't let anybody come in into the city, and they let anybody leave. So, like, possibly, I'm not, I'm not for sure, I'm not for sure on this. Don't quote me on this, but there's a possibility that they would let the people of Wuhan go about their business, possibly, depending what job they had, as long as they didn't leave the actual city. There's a possibility that that happened. I don't really know. I didn't really look into it because I didn't give a flying fuck to begin with. But there's a possibility they did that. But from what I heard, it was just quarantine. Like the the supposedly the city wasn't shut down. It was just um, blocked from complete access in and out of it. Like you couldn't leave Wuhan for anything, and you couldn't come into Wuhan for anything. So like, let's say you lived in Wuhan and you didn't make it by the time they started that quarantine. Too bad for your shit out of luck. You're not making it in. Mm -hmm. And same thing with out. Like if you're a businessman that was. Going there to do business in Wuhan, you were staying in. Like you weren't fucking leaving. From what I heard, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe there could be a possibility that they completely shut down every single thing. And they said, Hey, we're just gonna feed you bitches, we're gonna be giving you guys food and water or whatever. And you guys didn't even leave your fucking shacks. Yeah, I have actually watched enough like really cool, really interesting or like little YouTube documentaries from certain like networks here in America where they were like uh were, like documenting the, the shutdown in, in Wuhan where they had people that uh, they would have go around the whole city ch like door door after door after door after door checking people's temperatures uh, people volunteered to like be like the ration uh, person yeah like that's not food right exactly for like this building or this neighborhood or whatever but uh, for the most part bro it, it shit was a ghost town besides like people obviously being transported to hospitals and the people in the medical field so I think it was a, a fucking a shutdown. Bro, it should. If it was, it's crazy. Whether it was a shutdown or a quarantine, it was a harsh come down, right? Mm. They didn't. They didn't say. Oh, yeah, well, they didn't do that here. They didn't, they didn't volunteer people. Here. They didn't say like, hey, well, I mean, if you want, you guys could shut down. Or <laughs> no, they said, yeah. people are sick here. We're not gonna allow you guys to get the rest of the country sick. Yeah, but if you want to fly internationally, go to America, you can do that. Yeah, <laughs> but. We look at that and we're like, that's harsh. That's too far. That's too far. But if it helped spread, was it effective or not? But there's there's no there's no guarantee that it was or not. Cause think about all that shit that they found that they were hiding. You know, like like you just mentioned, it's faith based. You know, right now it's faith based that 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 they fucking did prevent the spread or not. There's no possible. I don't think so because of all the bullshit they fucking caught China doing already. I feel like they they probably didn't even shut down. I feel like they probably just pretended it was shut down. They probably just made videos of just one building and, oh, quick, we're going to capture this shit real quick and go send them to the Americans and hopefully they're happy. You know, for all we know, we got lied to. And they probably didn't even shut shit down. They probably just said, all right, these next couple blocks, we're going to leave them empty. And these people in this building, hey, we're going to shut you guys down for like a couple days just so we can record these videos. And after that, you guys are out. 
Yeah, that's the only reason I don't believe those videos that that yeah, that is already falling into the conspiracy realm, which is already sounding far fetched of me saying this. I know, but if they got caught in their bullshit once, what makes you think they didn't do that bullshit again just to fucking save face? Is that possibility, right? Yeah, it's possible. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I don't really believe shit of what China said. Hopefully they did. Hopefully they actually did do that. And hopefully it did help. It did prevent future spread or whatever. But I honestly don't think they did that. But here we have two systems. It's... Whether or not they're lying. You quarantine the area. You shut it down mm -hmm. to help prevent the spread to the rest of the country. If, in, if it works... It was effective. Yes. Authoritarian, but it was effective. But it was effective, yes. Now, if the cases are diminished, then that area is free to go back to the way things were. Yes. But Look see, at America. It's diminished. Look at America. Not eradicated. Look at America. There was one case, and now there's how many dead? 500 and something thousand? Uh, but even then, that fucking death toll is inflated. 250,000? Maybe less than that. Maybe 230,000. Maybe less. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no there's no accurate number. Because, like, they, they've said it before, the fucking death toll is inflated. They said supposedly, the, the the number that they're giving you, that supposedly it's 25% of that number. So let's say 500,000, they say only like 50 maybe are actually died from actual COVID. If, That's my, not math, 25%. if, my, if my math is right. If my math is right. 25% of that is like 125,000. Okay, let's say 100. Yeah, 125,000 died. Still a lot. Don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of people. But yeah, they say that supposedly it's inflated. So as a given then, it's just like, well, fuck, we're not even sure how many actual people died. Yeah. Because anybody that was dying from anything and they had COVID, okay, it's COVID death. Like that was proven to be true. That people were being considered COVID deaths based off of the fact that they had COVID. They didn't even die from it. Our co-worker's dad died from a fucking heart attack and they considered a COVID dead because he had contracted COVID. And COVID didn't kill him. He had a sugar rush because he had diabetes and it fucking killed him because he was so spooked about it. And the reason why I bring things up, I'm going to just, I'm going to keep it real. It's because there's no perfect system. Not at all. So, as much as I say I love America, I'm not going to just, you know, keep my head down no not at all nose to the grind and just shut up and, and alright just shut up and, and you know don't say shit every system is worthy of praise with the things it does right or criticism and criticism with its flaws like capitalism I like capitalism I prefer the system more than any I don't want communism fuck no but okay capitalism is where you can uh, work your way up and be and, and make an amazing uh, give you your family an amazing standard of living yeah you have all kinds of fucking money it's also the same system where the same person that drives that Mercedes has 300k in a bank account can drive by whatever part of the fucking right here in, by SoCal and there's tens and tens of homeless people that maybe lost their job through no fault of their own because of this pandemic and now they're fucked out of luck there is that possibility so it's it's the same system yeah the same system that can build you up is the same system where well, most, people, most people live in poverty but even then, even when, when it comes to communism it's like, or socialism, there's no guarantee that you're going to have a great life either. No. There's, that's how they're, like, each of them has their flaw in a way. No, 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 hold on, hold on, but we're jumping ahead. Like, okay. Why, why I said China, even though you were like, why the fuck would you bring it up, is because sometimes I, it's the hypothetical, but sometimes it plays in my head. And it's like, what if, because in America, you're free, okay, yeah, you're free, you're free, you're free, but you're also free to be a jackass. Yeah. You're also free to do things that other people find ridiculous. Yeah. There's things that I fucking, I see around here in America and I'm like, yeah, it's, we have that freedom to be this ridiculous. I look at, people probably look at me, whatever I do, and they're like, that guy's a jackass. I look at them too and I'm like, hey bro, I think you're a jackass too with some of the shit you do. Or the way you live. But it's freedom. We have the freedom I, to I feel, be I, ridiculous. I feel like you, I feel like you kind of jumped first because we were talking about more more economical but then you went more like to social to society societal societal whatever the fuck the name is 
So where, 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 were you, where were you getting at, though? That's what my right question. here, the difference is between the way America's doing it and the way China's doing it. Okay, but at first you were talking, like, economical. But then what, what were you getting at when you brought up freedom? Because that's already getting to the social spectrum. Okay. If they said we're shutting down LA early in the pandemic, okay. early on, this is where we have cases. And I believe in Washington also is where they had some of the first cases. Yeah. NorCal, SoCal, and Washington. This is, I think that's where it was. And then you say the whole West Coast. We're shutting down those areas. We're sh- Let's just say we're shutting down the West Coast. Yeah. Meaning just nobody in, nobody out. Would you call that freedom? Me personally, no. No, right? No. I don't. I think a lot of people around the country would be like, "Hey, what the fuck is going on over there? That's not. That's not America. That's not. That's not the American way. No. I don't. Nah. Hey, that's not the American people in Texas would go crazy. People in Florida. Hey, that's not the American way. But what if it worked? What if it worked? What if? Because of that hypothetical shutdown, there would be no cases in Oklahoma, no cases in Denver, no cases. It's, I see. I see what I'm going at. I see what you're going at, and it does make sense. The only thing where I see a flaw in is how how corruption played a part in the sense where people were making up fucking uh, uh, test results and 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 false positives because they were getting funded. So it's like, I feel like it would be good, like, don't get me wrong, it would be good, like, to shut it down, to shut down the, the West Coast and be like, hey, we're going to let you guys work, we're going to let you guys do your thing, but you motherfuckers are not leaving the goddamn state. Under any circumstances, none of you guys are leaving the state. And then it'll be like, don't trip, all those hospitals, all those clinics, we got you guys, we're going to fund you guys, we're going to be good. You know, if cases keep coming, we're going to keep on funding you guys, you know? That's where I feel like it, it, it leads it leads to the realm of corruption where people would be like, Hey fuck it. Let's ride this bitch as long as we can. If we gotta make a fucking false positive just to keep on getting funded, let's do it. Like, um I don't know if you you were aware, but some doctors or maybe clinics, I don't think it's a doctor specifically, but some doctors get commissions for mm-hmm. for giving vaccines to people. I heard actually. So it's like you're 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 telling me maybe maybe you as a doctor probably haven't even been vaccinated but because of the fact that you're gonna get a cut, you'll probably be like, Hey fuck it, I'll convince these fools to fucking get it. They're right. gonna believe me because I'm their fucking primary care physician. All right. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it it it's sounds like a smart idea, but I feel like it would be counterproductive. Based off of that. Based off of people would, would rather get paid then look at the the reality of it and be like, hey, you know what? Let's try our best to prevent the spread and let's try our best to to get this shutdown uh, lifted. You know, I feel like it wouldn't be like that. I feel like people would ride it out to the to the utmost limit to where finally Uncle Sam says, hey, OK, motherfuckers, it's already been a year and you fools still haven't fucking been been cleared. Like what the fuck's going on already? You know, that's yeah. why it's. I f- that that's where I'm just like I don't feel like it would work, like I feel like it's a good idea, but if people, you know, were were moral, and were honest, you know, it'd be a great system. I feel like it's something that'd be worth a try, but that's not the reality of it. You know, we don't live in that perfect world that we would love to. We we, we live a, with a lot of greedy, hungry motherfuckers that if they find out a way of making a quick buck, they're gonna take advantage of it. I know I probably even would. I'm not gonna go ahead and. And sit here high and mighty and be like, ah, no, I wouldn't. Like, if they fucking probably told us, like, hey, dude, keep on promoting the vaccine, bro. We're going to pay you out. Us, we're going to be thinking, maybe not you, but I'm just throwing you in there because the podcast is ours. Us will probably be like, hey, bro, let's just keep promoting it, man. We're, we're promoting something good, which is a vaccine, and we're getting paid for it. Let's just keep promoting it, promoting it, promoting it. We're still going to get paid, you know? And then it'll probably reach the point where we don't give a fuck about the vaccine. We're just caring that we're getting paid. You know, like I'm not gonna go ahead and see your high and mighty saying like, "Oh, money will never change me." It probably would. It probably would. Right now, it hasn't. But who knows? If I'm getting it just like that, just for opening my mouth and promoting something, I might. You know. Yeah, but as w- what I was talking about, ultimately, it's just a, like a fun for me. It's just a fun hypothetical to like imagine and stuff like that because ultimately, we did it this way. Now there's cases all over the country. 
dropping from what we hear and that's good want yeah. less people to die um i i understand that you don't think it's cost effective or effective the vaccine passport me i think i'm more willing than you to just like toy with it in my head you drawn a hard line you don't think it's effective I both monetary so. and and uh practical right no not at all I, I still because you're I still, limiting freedoms. You're limiting people's freedoms if they don't show you that. That's why I keep saying it's Gestapo. -y. Like you're basically telling me, if I don't show you my vaccination passport, I'm not going to be allowed in your place of business. Well, people believe masks are limiting freedom. Did you wear masks into the, the businesses you walked into? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, I did it because of common courtesy. I didn't do it because I felt like my freedom was being limited. I feel like I felt like me personally, I wasn't scared of the virus. I felt like if I get it, I get it, you know, which I got it and I got it, whatever. But I was going like, if I do have it, I personally wouldn't want to spread it to somebody just because I want to be a jackass about it and be like, oh, you're I honestly don't think a mask is limiting your freedom. Why? Because they're not preventing you from doing anything in your everyday life. You know, it's not like if they're forcing you, hey, as soon as you get in your car, bro, or as soon as you get out of the store, you still got to be wearing it. No, it was just like, hey, common courtesy, bro. If you're shopping in our store, wear your fucking mask. Okay, you just said common courtesy, and because it's not preventing you to do anything once you leave, like that business, right? Yeah. What you meant. How is that any different from that 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 uh, vaccination idea? Because they're not going to go ahead and say, oh, you're vaccinated, you don't got to wear a mask. They're still going to make you wear a mask. I feel like they're still going to do it for the next. I would I would at least say till the end of the year. Even if you're vaccinated, they're still going to tell you wear a mask. Why? Because you could still catch the virus. You could still spread it. There's still that possibility. But now they're limiting you. Well, I mean, I can't say they're limiting you more because a lot. Of, I don't really think the mask was a limitation. You know? So it's not Because there were some that people... No, no, because there, there were some people... There were some places that wouldn't enforce the mask. That they wouldn't say, hey, well, if you don't let the mask, you're not going to shop here. There's some places that didn't give a shit. Texas. Arizona was one of them. Florida. Arizona was one of them where I would go into the shop and some places did, you know, ask you to wear a mask. And other places... They wouldn't give a shit. You know, if you wore a mask, cool. So it was up to the shopkeepers. If if they did, if they did, cool. You know? Was it up to the shopkeepers? It was up to the shopkeepers. Bro, I think that's ultimately like like how it's going to be, period. I don't think it's going to be like that with a vaccination passport. Bro, I really don't think again, it's that. Again, even if it passes as federal, not everybody's going to enforce it. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like some some state, or at least in California, they probably would. They probably would enforce it, you know? Because it's fucking California. And I feel like the states, just so they don't get shit on and they don't get fucked with, they're going to enforce it. Like stores out there, I feel like they're going to do it. Because you are you don't want to get fucked with If your state already regulated it and already said, hey, well, we're requiring these motherfuckers to go into the base of business with a passport, you got to check them. You're going you're gonna to be forced to do it. Like You may not want to, but if it's either that or you risk getting either shut down or getting heavily fined, you're going to be like, nah, fuck that, we're checking this shit. You know? And if you don't provide for it, Okay, well, sorry, bro. You can't get shit. So where are you going to get your things from? You know? So basically, you're forcing somebody to do something that they don't want to do. You're, you're forcing people. Because there there are general concerns regarding, regarding the vaccine. There are serious, yet rare, rare cases of side effects. Do you want to be that rare case? You know? I personally wouldn't give a shit. Like I, like I said it before, I'll take it if if I didn't catch COVID. I already caught COVID. I don't give a fuck about it now. But if I didn't if I didn't have it, I'll take the vaccine. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, I'll take it. Why not? But yeah, there's probably people out there that are more worried about the side effects. You know, possibly. I'm not speaking for everybody, but there's probably people out there that are worried about the side effects. Where they're saying, hey, I listen to the side effects. I hear it's A, B, and C. I understand it's one in 100,000, but how many people have you vaccinated so far? Oh, well, we vaccinated 99,998. Okay, so there's a chance that two of us motherfuckers are going to get symptoms. And I happen to be Mr. 9,999, you know? Obviously, those are those are far-fetched concerns, but they're still concerned that there's people out there that probably do have those. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I just feel like it's something that shouldn't be forced on people. It shouldn't. We didn't force we didn't force vaccinations on on uh, the swine flu when the swine flu vaccine came out. We didn't fucking force vaccinations on that. We made it optional. Hey, if you want to catch it, you want to die from it, that's on you, bro. You know, you're free to do that. 
why is it now that we're doing it with fucking COVID? With a 99.8 fucking survival rate. What if those numbers are made up? Possibly. What if it's the death... You see, we're, we're, we get what we're being given. Yeah. And then from there, we have to draw our own conclusions. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... But, man, that's, a. Uh, again, I'm not a fucking communist. I've said it. Uh, I like capitalism. You sound a little communist. But no system is free of criticism. Because once you start doing that, you just take what they give you and you don't ask questions. You just fucking... You know, you know it's fucking hilarious? Uh, are you familiar with the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah. Yeah? There's an episode where um, some... I forgot the character's name. I think his name was Mac. He's very into religion. He's very religious. He's called himself a Catholic or whatever. I think a Christian. One of the two. But he's heavily into faith or whatever and all up that shit. And they're trying to... They're making an argument about religion and science. So everybody goes, nah, fuck that. We're going into science. Like, you know, they actually have a little a little board where they have a cross and then they, their cross is... It's one column is, is, is religion. The other column is in between and the other column is science. So everybody, right off the bat, they go, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to science. And he goes, what the fuck, man? How do you make my argument? He goes, no, nah, no, nah, it's cause, no, we're not going to believe in religion. You know? So they, they're, they're set on it. So this will goes, this will brings out the brilliant, a lot of brilliant minds out there. And it, it had me thinking, because I'm not going to name by name, because I don't really know who the fuck they were. But basically, he names scientists that made famous discoveries. Like, mm-hmm. one of them, I believe, was Galileo. Mm-hmm. Right? And he goes, he's the one that discovered the Earth was round and that pu- that Jupiter was a planet or whatever and blah, blah, blah. A very bold mind. And he goes, yet yeah, he died. I think it was him or maybe another dude. He died of mercury poisoning because they thought that it cured ailments. And he goes, so he ended up looking like a bitch. So he slaps a bitch sign on him. <laughs> so he, named, he names all these fucking scientists and basically says some of the shit that eventually got him killed and made him look like bitches like bro you call yourself a smart man in your time and people see you as this pioneer yet mercury killed you your dumbass thought you were you were smart enough that you thought mercury was going to cure your ailments and you fucking died like an idiot you know so he basically makes those arguments and he goes hey and he goes that doesn't mean anything he goes the, the other dude that's trying to argue him he goes that doesn't mean anything and he goes, it doesn't? He goes, no, it doesn't. He goes, because, you know, there's, there's errors or whatever that happened. But, and he goes, based off of what? And he goes, how, how are these guys not wrong or whatever? And he goes, because scientists make up articles and evidence. And he goes, have you witnessed this evidence? Have you witnessed these articles? And he goes, no. He goes, but it's been publicized everywhere in the world. And he goes, so it sounds to me you're basing this off of faith? And the guy goes, oh, shit. <laughs> so everybody goes, oh, fuck, you're right. You know, we got to go in the middle, man. We got to go in the middle. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, he didn't prove anything. He didn't prove anything. Like, what do you mean he didn't prove anything? <laughs> he just proved it. You've never seen these statistics. Yeah. You've never seen this data or any of that shit. So basically, you're going off faith yeah. to believing these scientists. And I'm not going to lie. That had me going like, holy shit, he's right. Yeah, every time we speak about statistics, every time or we speak data, about data, we're really just repeating things we didn't hit. we just we heard. Yeah, because we weren't there when the data it's was technically faith based. And someone said data is really just a collective of uh, what's it called? What's it called when you when you when something just happens to you, but you try to pass it off as, as data? Personal experience. There's a name for that though. Fuck, I fucked it up. But they say data is really just, I guess, a bunch of personal experiences. You gather a bunch of them up and you say, look, data. <laughs> yeah. And people say, all right, cool. Let me get it. Yeah. So I was just like, that's actually true. Yeah. 